guys and gals, now we're here from Drake Wing Gaming. So you may have of the Gaming Drag today, and we're coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Kingsguard, Leandros' Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, let's go, actually, you know what, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Y'all know, know the deal by now, we'll do the Patreon stuff at the end of the video anyway. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright, I take threats to my life very seriously, so you do well to remember that, especially considering the position you're in. This is my ship and my rules, whatever I say goes. Don't like it? Well... Croon looked over the side of the ship. I suppose it's been a while since I made someone walk the plank. The tactic of walking the plank has been banned years ago when your, na when your nation's navy had begun their campaign of ridding the Red Seas of pirates. It was a gruesome act, for one was made to walk a thin and wobbly gangplank for the amusements of others before eventually being forced to fall into the sea. With arms and legs bound together to prevent one from swimming, it was a horrible way to die. Especially for those who were made to jump into waters full of blood-fringed sharks. A cruel but favorite execution among pirates. I do hope that I have made myself clear. You nodded your head, and after a while of a momentary stare-down between Londres and the captain, he eventually nodded as well. Good. The captain waved his hand in the air, and the crew went back to their duties, though a few still kept a close eye. You're beginning to wonder if you should have stayed back on the island. Your mouth was burning with questions for Jaws, like, how did you... Like, how did you know these people, and were they really trustworthy? Though now was not the right time to say them. You would have to speak in private. Now, I believe an explanation is in order, seeing as you happen to be quite distraught as to why Jaws is on board the ship. Which I do find quite strange, as Jaws seemed to speak as though the three of you were somewhat close. We were just taken by surprise is all. Is that so? The man looked at, looked at you as though your lie was as thin as air. Right, Leandros? No, whatever went on between you three, I couldn't care less. I'm a busy man, after all. Focusing my attention on petty little quarrels is beneath me. The Andros, was it, to answer your burning question? Jaws here is your payment for a safe voyage to the mainland. What do you mean? Also, I don't like being interrupted. Make sure you remember that, too. Right, my apologies, Kroon. Captain Kroon. It won't happen again. If the show of humbleness would have softened him up. You learn fast. I think we'll get along just fine. And you were sure glad it did. The man had a look of glee on his face that upset your stomach, as though he feasted on praise. The Andres balled his fist, slightly disgusted by the very fact that you had to act in this manner towards this man. But right now you would need to remain on his good side. You and Leandres especially had to tuck away your pride. He carried it on, he came to me about a trade. Two individuals to be ferried across the Red Sea to the mainland. Of course, he had nothing of value to offer me, though he did come up with a suitable payment that I couldn't pass up. And that is... Servitude. Jules here will leave me crew for no less than four years, two for each of your passages. F four years?! An honest trade, in all things considered. Passage aboard the Blue Crown is no cheap after all, and I doubt any of you had the money. How much? More than you can afford, boy. More than you can afford. If only he knew. Jaws, you... you did that... for us? See you there, mystery solved. No act of betrayal, or as I seem to have heard you say, that he sold you out. Unless me ears deceived me, it certainly made me quite curious. It almost sounded like you two are more than what Jaws has told me. Your heart stopped. The possibility that these people could have taken you hostage was becoming more and more real, especially if they found out who you were. You wondered if it was even possible to lie to him, to lie to him too. I suppose I don't really care either way. I'm a man of my word. So long as you follow the rules, you'll get home with very little hair on your head in place. Of course, we'll have to find a job for you. The boy doesn't look much. Maybe cleaning duty. But you look like a strong lad. Moving and securing cargo should be perfect. Job? Yes, of course. After all, you can't expect a food or a place to lie your weary head if you don't work. That is not what we agreed upon. Jaws had a look of surprise and irritation, as though this was the first he had heard of it. Their passage has already been paid for. Aye, their safe passage was agreed upon, but you never said anything about food or lodging. If I recall your words very clearly, you said, They'll offer up me servitude for their safe passage. It has to be worth something to you. Unless my ears deceive me, which to clarify, they never have. If you wanted more, you should have been more clear about that when we were making our contract. After all, it's a little late to be going back on your deals now, unless you wish these two to be tossed overboard. 
I suppose that settles that matter. Now let's get these two off to work. The deck needs swabbing and the cannons need shining. After all, we'll need all the help we can get for the upcoming bat. <clears throat> Crude! Once more, the deck grew quiet as Jaws interrupted the captain. Only unlike before, the crew simply watched in interest. Though you notice that not a single one of them put a hand near their weapon or even as the shark began to intimidate their captain. Even as captain, you should know when to hold your tongue. You dare talk to me. You want to talk about promises, about being a man of your word. Then you best remember every last detail of our deal. I won't take you feign in ignorance. <laughs> I suppose I do recall that little secret of yours. I'll say no more. But know that the next time you try to command me, I'll be having you scrape barnacles from the hull. You speak as though you don't already have that in mind for me. Crew merely cracked a spiteful little grin before turning away from the shark. Enough of the pleasantries. Time for the lot of you to get back to work. As my great-great-grandfather used to say, work to be fed, work for a bed. Okay, why don't you show our little kitty here below deck? I'm sure he'll be very busy preparing for the it. I mean the journey ahead. You didn't quite like the idea of le leaving Leandros alone with the orc considering what happened with your initial meeting. As Akai approached, Leandros gently pushed you aside to confront him. The two beastmen looked ready to rip each other's throats out at any moment, though only Akai looked like he might enjoy the fight. Well, what are you waiting for? Get a move on! If you think I'm going to be leaving Jake in your hands, you're... For as defensive as you are, you'd lead some to believe you'd be his mother. Are you going to sing him a sweet little lullaby and rock him to sleep, too? The entire crew with an earshot began to laugh as Kroon taunted Leandros. You thought you'd gotten used to Leandros' protective nature, yet you couldn't help but feel a little embarrassed by that. I'll look after Jake and make sure nothing happens to him. You, the one who got us into this. Leandros, I know that you're worried, but I'll be okay. Besides, you trained me, right? I can take care of myself. Alright. But if you even for a second sense danger, I'll yell, and I'll come running. I'll tear it through each and every last one of the one of you if I have to. A few members of the crew who were still chuckling ceased as Leandros aimed his taunt at them. There were a few who actually appeared scared of Leandros, mostly the humans. But the majority seemed to unfazed and actually looked forward to a fight. That goes for you, too. Hmm. If I was truly bothered by your threats, you'd have been thrown overboard already. Now, Akai, get him out of my sight. Move. Threaten me all you want, cat. We'll see just how sharp your fangs are in due time. You really should be careful around him. Careful? Who do you think I am? You don't know yet the fury of that lion. Tease him all you want, but I'd bet the rest of my fin that he'd tear this ship asunder if anything were to happen to Jake here. And just what makes you so, so special, he'd sail through hell and high water just to rescue you. Family. Family, is it? Well, I don't think I ever seen a woman give birth to a beast, much less the beast woman give birth to a boy. We're not tied by blood, but we're family just the same. Closest brothers that you think not to question otherwise if you were blind. I suppose it would explain his motherly feelings for you. I won't deny he can be overbearing at times, but he's protected me since birth. But I am more than capable of looking after myself. Is that so? When I look at you, I see nothing more than a scrawny boy with barely any muscle in his body. You know that you weren't built like a castle like the rest of the crew, but you were far from useless. You look and act like a noble. A pretty face and no muscle. Your whole being would strain so much to lift anything heavier than a quill. And those upon my ship who don't work don't get fed, and thus I cannot seem to think of a job that you could do. I may not be as strong as a beast man, but I'm not frail or for fragile either. I can do any job that you give me just as well as your crew. You're an eager one, aren't you? Reminds me a lot of Jaws here. I was as scrawny as a twig before I whipped him up into shape. And you will not be doing the same to Jake, if any harm comes to him. Yes, yes, our deal is off. I know the restrictions of our contract. Hmm. The sound of something hitting the deck and the laughter of the crew pulled the captain's eye towards the boy who had stumbled. A man who looked nearly your age was scurrying across the deck, picking up what various items that were rolling about. After gathering them all, he hurried on his way, nearly tripping over his feet again. The captain became wide-eyed, and a sly grin spread across his face once more. Well, I think I might have found a task that this boy can do that should leave him relatively unbroken by dinner time. Jaws, go be useful and fetch that boy a meal, why don't you? 
Mute, what for? You ask a lot of questions for one who swore obedience and servitude to me. Jaws left without another word and returned just a moment later with the same clumsy boy. His clothes, while slightly ragged and torn in spots, are relatively new, making him look dressed out, of, dressed out of place among the other crew. He seemed quite chipper, at least compared to the grim faces of the other crew members. And as he walked alongside Jaws, he had a bounce in his step and was chatting almost ceaselessly to the shark as though they were longtime companions. Captain, are you sure this isn't about last night? I mean, I know that I took seconds, but I was just so hungry and no one else was going to eat it, so I was just going, so it was just going to get cold and go to waste. So it really was a good thing that... Emil, you're not in trouble. And I'm also not your captain anymore. But Captain Jaws, you'll always be my captain. So much nicer than Croon. <clears throat> ah, uh, Captain Croon. You sure know how to run your mouth, boy. Sorry, Captain Croon. What happened again? Yeah, oh, I know it won't. Keep it up, and one of these days the sea sharks will be having a full course dinner. The boy audibly gulped and quickly stood at attention. Now, Emil, I want you to take this boy. His name is Jake. I want you to take him and show him the ropes. Start off by swabbing the decks. That should keep the boy. That should keep the two of you busy. Do that for me, and I may just forget about the extra helpings you snuck last night. Yes, sir. Uh, Captain Croon, sir. Uh, swab the deck. Swab the decks. Even surely you must have heard of it before. Well, yeah, but I... But I shouldn't have to explain it. Emil here, while not very bright, is still quite the sailor. He'll be your steward, and you his cabin boy of sorts for the remainder of the trip. You can count on me, sir. Croon, but I understand that Emil is more than capable of being a mentor to Jake. I can teach him. You? Who? Oh, I will not be having any of that. Until we reach our destination, I want you to remain as far away from the boy and that cat. What do you mean? What I mean is that I... What I mean is to say that I'm captain and you will do as I say without question. I see the way that the three of you act and it can only lead to distractions from your work. Apart from that, you'll be much more preoccupied with your tasks and less likely to slack off. Somehow, I don't think that's all of it. No, quite frankly, I still don't quite trust you. Neither you nor the lion, neither you nor the boy or the lion. You think we're some sort of threat? If you are, you'd have, I'd have you just walk the plank. Then why the precautions? The most dangerous fungus grows in the darkest of shadows. And not be having any of you making any sort of plans. And that goes for eating and sleeping as well. You mean to have me and Leander separated for the entirety of the trip? He's so dependent on that beastman that you can't go a couple of days without sucking on his tit. Even so, it is going too far. <laughs> it's no wonder the boy looks the way he does. When I was his age, I was a man among men. He had a full, he had a full beard, muscles the size of coconuts, and a thousand men following me like a king. <laughs> then what happened, Captain Croon? Huh, what do you mean, what happened? Well, you have patches in your beard. Your arms aren't very big, but your gut is... But your gut is, and you only have a crew of about 20. Urgh, this is all because of that damned backstabbing, greedy, conniving little bastard Marvin Deprane. Shoving me out of my market and stealing my customers. And flaunting around with his authentic silks and rugs imported right from the wastes. And gold rings and silver necklaces for master artisans in Yasan. But he'll get what's coming to him. Yes, first it'll be his merchandise, and his ship, and finally his life. Croon burst into maniacal laughter with a mouth so wide he could have swallowed a seagull. He weren't entirely sure how this Marvin individual was connected to Croon's clearly far-fetched achievements, but he did recognize the name. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold-tier patron, Terezum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not-safe-for-work contents as little as $5 already. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye